Greetings YouTube, this is BJ Black, and welcome to part 33 of my Let's Play of Ama Yui Castle Meister. Today we finally cleared out all of the conversations that we needed to see, so now we can get to these dungeons that have been piling up. This in regards to a spring of fresh water we think we can find. Alright, so since we made a pipe, we want to set down some pipes here. But if he observes that there are already pipe looking things, Navarro confirms he didn't do it. So these are pretty old water pipes. Looks like somebody used them for water conveyance before. Since it looks like it goes deeper, it, there's probably a source of water down there. But no water coming out of these pipes. Yeah, they're clogged up with mud and ashes and rocks and things. So all we need to do is replace the pipes. So we're going to swap out all the old pipes with these new ones that Avaro made. Here, here, and here. So if we bring Avaro to all the event points... Now I'm really starting to rack up the characters, and Navarro is getting really behind level. Now, I already moved Navarro. I'm gonna equip Navarro really well, see if he can defeat some of the monsters in this area, and finally catch up with everybody. I'm in the tight spot that if I just level up the really good characters, the other characters will fall behind, and if you don't level your characters up, you don't get the scenes related to them later in the game. Probably. At least that's how I'm used to doing it. Okay. I'm a little hesitant to field these guys. Because they're so high level, but I need Connor for this one. In an earlier trial run, I wasted like six characters on a certain monster in here. He's not going to be making much headway on this monster, that's for sure. So now we've got the Earth Elementals and the Improved Earth Elementals. Oh yeah, let's equip our all. Remember when we took him out of the party, we decided to unequip him of everything he owned. And now equipped up, he is actually a pretty good match for these level 19 monsters.
these guys aren't really worth capturing. But if he gets a lucky hit, we'll get one anyway. Oh no. <laughs> that was not meant to be. These guys have the distance reduction. So any attack that comes at them from a distance gets reduced significantly. She'll get hurt a bit, but she'll defeat the enemy. You know what? I'm going to stop digging around. Because in this particular map... In this particular map, if you clean out all the enemies in 15 turns, you get a bonus at the end. Oh, hey, a mining point. I found out in my trial run that if even one more of my characters dies in the remainder of the game, I have to see the cutscene with Fia that opens up the Hetare dungeon. And that would be a shame upon my character, so... I want to guarantee you, you won't be seeing any more of my characters die. Hmm. Keep it up around him. Even if her damage is significantly reduced. She's still the best damage dealer I have against that right now. Unless I want to park Fear right next to him. Which is far too dangerous. Hmm. You know what, I ought to be trying to capture this guy because he's a magic beast and I need more of them. 
but leveling up Avaro is important at the moment. Uh, good job, Ramin. Mean, now go away. So, he sets down pipe and he's done there. Alright. Fia's noticed something, tells everybody to stop. Yeah, that's weird. So, it's a golem. This is pretty nice, actually. Well, not to rain on Navarro's parade, but it appears to be headed our way. Yep, headed our way and totally about to attack us. Okay, Fia, can you stop this thing? It's part of your body, right? Does this ever work? Well, not this time. In fact, it's exhilarating. You know what, it's been a while since I've done some long-range attacks. Hey, this thing that Deed gave us will work. Pucha. Naturally, it's completely useless. Yes. This is a electrified golem. So even Ranrin wouldn't do much to it, but because of being electrified, he's now vulnerable against Earth. For whatever reason. But he has only Earth attacks. Leaving him in the unenviable position of being weak against the Earth Elemental standing in front of him. In fact, unable to hurt him. Uh, you're about done here, Fia. All that's left for you to do is... But this guy has massive defense. I all of a sudden have tons of control points for Karin. It must have been what I used those bats to buy. Shows how much I pay attention, huh? Were you surprised to see this? Truth be told, I wasn't. This guy hurts, but Eol has actually got enough attack to get through its defense if he wants to. If she wants to. And has pretty good dodge, so it won't hit him all the time. Case in point. Now let's see what she can do. Nothing. Well, hmm. Oh, it can counterattack if I do that. Well, a couple damage is better than nothing. These things have insane defense, but not very much life. Oh, haha. -ha. Weak against lightning, are you? Suck it! Extra luck, that's good. Gold dust. Yeah, 
Shutsugeki! Actually, you know what? I'm gonna give Fia in for backup. When she's standing right there next to... Actually, I'm gonna test this out. We'll have two Yuiki next to her. Both of them protect her from attacks. So let's see if she's now invulnerable. Okay, here we go. Oh, yes. Hmm. Well, that's convenient. I forgot about this. Since it's electrified, it actually has some damage reduction against electrified attacks now. But... Ronin has got a lot of magic attack and it doesn't have much magic defense. Now, let's see if it can counterattack this effectively. Round ring protection. Ah. So only one Yuiki gets to protect her a turn. Oh, God. I got a purple mushroom. Have I gotten any purple mushrooms yet? So certain enemies when they get, well, certain heroes as well, when they get low on life, activates their determination skill, which adds 20% to their attack powers. Now at 50% it adds 20% and below 20% life it adds 50% to all their stuff. So now his physical defense is way up at 27 enough to significantly reduce the damage I was doing before. Fortunately, he's still got crappy magic defense. <laughs> oh, a castle wall ring. This is an improvement on the green ring we got before. Now she's pouting because this kid that's, well, she calls it a child, that's supposed to be part of her isn't, is just attacking on its own and won't listen to what she's saying. Yeah, pout all you want. Well, it's just a little out of control right now. She doesn't even care what happens to it now. Brat. Now I have three turns to take care of these two elementals before I lose my prize. This should do. Hmm. Oh, that time both of the Yuiki activated their defense skills. Well, anyway. Alright. I've almost got them all. Capture time. So that's another one down. On to the next.
Did I already mention? Hey, that's a lot of wood. Did I already mention that in this map, if you collect all the goddess cards, you get a reward? Alright, now that we've got those, all we need to do is get this last one. And this is designed to force you to fight the golem. Like I needed to be forced. Great, we're done. Now we, anytime we want, we can have a bath. That's not the only reason. Yeah, she wants a big bath that everyone can play in. And she'll wash off our back for him. Well, that sounds like fun. Oh no, Yo can't take baths. That's just no good, no good. That's not. Avaro was trying to say it's for everybody and there are all kinds of uses. But these guys are all hair heads. Judging by the characters in it, we could have gotten this before. Even though we only recently got the ability to gather volcanic rock. I still wonder why Kisner had nothing else to say. Okay, that's that. Check, check, check. Alright, we're good here. Hmm, interesting. Well, well. More conversations. So now that we've done that, we have the ability to build a bath. Yes. Probably it'll be similar. Probably it will be similar to the scenes in Kamidori when you made a bath there. How many scenes did they have? But anyway, we've got people to listen to. Okay, this map. As it turns out, this map is totally wrong. For instance, here it says Rickbell City. Rickbell City is just north of this gap. In fact, you can see the city wall right there. So, they made a bit of a mistake in making this particular map. This isn't the capital city either. That's Uragaru Twin Peaks. So, they intended to have this snapshot of a map about one screen north of here. Uh, anyway, we learned some things. For one thing, the capital city is that big city in this area. And its name is Sausha. Over here we have the way where the spirits creep out or flow out. It's a little swamp you can see from the map. The Doshio Peak and Rolorosa Town, we've been introduced to them. And in the middle of all those is the Tranquilo Hilly area, or Tranquilo Hills. So, somebody from way up north, that is the Tranquilo Hills, has come to visit us. All right, she's come with a request, and she speaks really slowly. So this is in regards to the Mosteria army. According to the story from this old woman, in the Rankiro Hills, or by the Rankiro Hills, there's an old fortification that the Mausteria 
army has started garrisoning. Since Mazter is a god of armies, the worshippers also have a pretty big army themselves. And since they're garrisoning there, they need a bunch of goods. Well, they've gathered goods from the nearby towns and such. Not only foods and other perishables, but also items for long-term use. Durable goods. The Mosteria army needed more than the local goods could provide. Towns could provide. And so the Mosteria army started turning to other providers. And for that reason, other merchants started coming in. Okay, this is your problem? Merchants coming in? I'd like to inform you that this is progress and you should... Wait, did you say Gaidal? Okay, never mind, we'll fuck those guys up for you, sure. Yeah, Gaidal Shokai. The Gaidal Company. You remember Gaidal, right? Black clothes. All kinds of evil looking. Tried to kill Eel. So, Gaidal, having gotten into a cozy relationship with the Mouse Terry Army, has managed to divert a lot of funds into away from the villages and towards himself. In fact, due to the favor he's gotten, he's actually able to undersell them in their own towns. Yeah, that sounds like something he would do. Does anybody understand economics? Would you like a lecture? I have books. Okay. And anyway, we want to stop the guy at all company because, well, he's a dick. Notwithstanding the economic nonsense of hating him for undercutting sales. Okay, she's saying very slowly that normally they wouldn't send these, send her, the village chief, out. But due to circumstances, they have few people to work with. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, please do this for us. Okay, fine. Well, unfortunately, Avaro is basically the only engineer working in here, so he can't produce very many items. But he'll somehow figure out a way. So, rest at ease. Thanks a lot. So, she's very respectful and bows her head a bunch. Feel surprised to hear Ga Gaidal up to this kind of business. Well, as a merchant, he certainly has a nose for the job. So, how do we oppose him? As I've already said, he can't exactly mass produce anything. Well, in that case, we'll increase the quality. By heightening the value we provide with new goods, we should be able to provide something. And furthermore, there are craftsmen working in the castle that we can spread information 
through and get information from. Yep. In addition to the people in the Tranquilo Hills, the craftsmen of the castle are also pretty useful. Alright, so we're not going to lose to guide all company. And we get to make this thing, and this thing, and another thing. Well, I captured this spirit, but with just one, there's not much use. Fine, we'll listen to you. So, today's a really hot day. And they can't just... And our spirit is taking a toll from the heat. So, we're going to take a rest under a tree. Oh god, don't tell me you're molesting her again. Alright, so she is... sort of. This time we're observing that Mikio's body appears to be pretty cool most of the time. Even on a hot day like this. <laughs> yeah. Mikio's body may be cool, but Fia's body happens to be kind of sparkly or something. In any case, when she's grabbing onto Mikio like that, Mikio doesn't cool off very well. Yeah, okay, so the both of them are going to grab onto Mikio. I guess she's got a nice cooling effect to her. Still, she doesn't seem to dislike it entirely. Navarro tell, calls the two of them out and tells them to get off her already. Fia says he's just jealous. And he ought to come in too. Uh, no. I'm a guy, remember? Mikio says if it's Navarro, it should be fine. She's fine with it, rather. Really? Alright, so the close-up is very to let us draw again for a bit of her cooling power. Hmm. So it really is kind of cool. If he has, says, yeah. Okay, you shouldn't be the one bragging here, but it's true that So, she's speculating that it could be because she was raised in a cold climate. Her hometown is in the north of the continent. So, where you... The, the environment in which you grow up has an effect on your body heat, huh? Interesting. Io has a different idea. Around Mikia, there are always these, these snowmen. Well, yeah. They're always falling around, doing little things for her. So, they're always by her. And always doing little things. Alvaro speculates that there's some kind of Skyma. Or familiar spirits. Well, naturally, they'd be cold. So... She has got a little to contribute. But she speculates that... The snowman are something that Mikio can control because she came from a 
up north. Also, she. Okay, so she is getting her hands on Mikayo's ears again. But perhaps unconsciously, Mikayo's been using these guys to regulate her body temperature. Oh, wait a minute. This means that even before you got your magic book, you were able to summon these things? Yep, you can confirm. They've always been around Mikayu. So, that's kind of amazing after all. Using a magic book is like channeling your power through a medium. But if she didn't even have a medium and she could use this kind of magic, that's kind of impressive. Oh yeah, and she hadn't even learned the basics of magic yet. Alright, let's have a test. If you want to put out a bunch of snowmen, how many can you do? Well, it shows three, but you can imagine, like, a couple hundred. Nah, a couple thousand. They are buried in snowmen. Well, they do look kind of cute. There are so many. Havaro says it's a bit scary. <laughs> yeah, feels glad, because this way she gets to cool down better. all says they look tasty. Alright, so Mikio, how's it like? Alright, it didn't actually use much of her magic power. Although she made him consciously this time. It's actually easier than using normal magic. Well, that's an interesting talent. <laughs> She's got this heavenly talent for creating snowmen. Well, that's nice, I guess. You could call it a subclass of ice magic. Well, a talent for snowmen. She's thinking it doesn't have much practical use. Yeah, Avaro can't think of anything either. Oh, you're not happy? Well, she is happy in a way, but... She was hoping for something more useful. Remember we were talking about what her specialty would be? Oh, how long ago was that? But what can she use her snowman for? We can eat him. Eat them? But it's their snow. Navarro says they could be made into some kind of ice candies. When it's hot out, they'd be pretty popular. Oh, how nice. If you take the snowmen and chop them up into tiny beets, you can put them together and make these ice candies. Well, no, no, no. You can't do that to the poor things. Even though they seem so tasty. Um, you, you probably shouldn't stare at them like that. 
any case. The snowmen do have the ability to put off some cold in this. So, in relation to cooling down, they're kind of useful. She says that actually water magic would be better. These snowmen aren't made of ice, but merely snow. Yeah, that does mean they have a bit less staying power. Yeah, it doesn't seem like something she can turn into money very easily. Yeah, in the end she really thinks about how to make money with her talents. Well, other than that, they're also cute. Hey. Yeah, she's a little disappointed that this talent of hers that we found doesn't have much use. <laughs> okay, but it does have use. She says if you make a really big one, you can throw it at your enemies. Well, Mikeu, who fights with these snowmen, is kind of cool cute. All right. In addition, she's got that ice shield, which is from a compressed kind of snow, and it's pretty useful too. So I guess we're okay with that. Navarro, for one, thinks it's a pretty amazing talent. How to use it is the problem. So, if they have a chance, they're going to try other ways to change it into advantageous. So, yeah, there she is, and she's surrounded by her little snowman. I notice there's one at Eel and Mikeu's house all the time, too. Alright, let's hear it. Alright, this is another one of the Beastman tribe. So, he's bought a bunch of weapons from us. Alright, so these guys have been buying weapons and probably next time he comes he'll, they'll buy more. So please have a bunch for us. And furthermore, he's hoping that we can set aside some food for them to purchase as well. Although they're now getting a bit short on funds, but it can't be helped. Yeah, Avaro admits we don't have a lot of food to spare either, but what we have we can try to sell to you. Alright, he understands. He'll take whatever we can Whatever we can um, spare for him. <laughs> Jeez, don't sneak up on us, heel. You're too cute. I mean, uh, stealthy. So, these are more beastmen from the Beastman Valley up there. They've been buying weapons from us. Ah, Eel seems to know something. She says 
they've come again, the monsters. Tenko Danso. Mareta Tokoro. Mo Yemo Naikedo. So, that Beastman Valley is where Eo was born. Although his ha her house isn't there anymore. Jeez, she's, she's so boyish. Keep saying that. So, every few years, the monsters in the Beastman Valley start to multiply. Probably, it's happening again right now. Yes, they come out with their claws and attacks, they, the fights start increasing, and it's a bad time. She's unusually expressive here. She asks some of our asks if something happened to her before. Yeah, something happened. Eel's parents died in one of these proliferating periods. Sorry. Yeah, it's gotten dark pretty quick. So, Eel's parents were the victims of the monsters, huh? The two of them were strong. So when the monsters came, it would be the two of them fighting. Oh. So they were doing their best to protect the village. But nobody from the village would help them. Eel said she would help, but they left her behind. And so, since they had to fight so many monsters, just the two of them, they eventually died. Is that why you left the village? Since they were relying solely on the two parent, her two parents, They were basically leaving them to eventually die like that. She didn't want to stay in the village because she'd stay weak. So in order to grow stronger, she left. Hmm, that must have been sad. In addition to disliking or resenting the villagers, well, it couldn't be helped. She says she's not really sad about it. The weak die. And since Eo's parents were weaker than the monsters, that's all there was to it. The world is easy to understand. The strong live, and the weak die. God, that's dark. And, speaking on these dark topics, Eel's eyes get this dark look in them. So, Eo is stronger than she was then, and she won't die. She's going to live and protect her family. So, this is Eo's view on life and death, hmm?
So, this is the reason why she left her village and went into the underworld for jobs. So yeah, that does make sense if you want to be stronger. So, what's up with this periodic proliferation of monsters? Probably, somewhere. There's a monster nest. So, the problem is going to continue. Okay. I've all once um, yield to think about this a bit. He'd like to visit the Beastman Valley and see his hometown. See her hometown. Does he plan to go to the monster nest? So, since we're as strong as we are, we should be protecting the weak people in the village, hmm? Eel's keeping a really expressionless look on her face for this. Basically behind it, she's saying, They left my parents to die. And now we have to protect them from monsters. Well, I've all thought about that, but his immediate plan was actually a bit different. According to the person who was just here, they also needed food. Yeah, when there are too many monsters, there's always a food shortage. I've all imagined that something like stealing of crops and things. Alright, so, here's the plan. Even if we don't have to go fight anybody, we're going to make a food delivery for, at the very least, the children of the village and the old people who can't fight the monsters. So, by filling everybody's stomachs, at least we can do that much to help. Alright. It was good with helping people in that fashion, at least. And anyway, Eel's cooking is really good. So she can show off some of the cooking which she's so proud of to the villagers. Get them filled up and everyone will be happier. So, at least the people who have to go and fight will be at ease on that regard. Yeah, she does want to make sure they get fed right. And she does like cooking and practicing cooking, so more practice is better. So, we ruffle up her hair. And we don't need to think about this strong and weak stuff. So let's just do what we can to help. So with this we've decided to bring Eo back to her hometown even though she has some regrets about it. And anyway, regarding these abilities Eel has, both the fighting and the cooking, 
If ever she wants to help out the village, be sure to give Avaro a call. And we can go together and get everything worked out. In the first place, we'd like to see her hometown anyway. Alright. She'd like to show Avaro and everybody the sights of her village at the very least. So, when she speaks about this, her eyes show a bit of a warm s sensation behind them. This is a bit of a mistake. This is saying that in the Beastman Valley, this new map has opened up. But the reality is a bit different. Which we will see next time. So, thanks for watching. And I will see you tomorrow, YouTube.